know it's the journey, journey. You know it's the journey for me. You know it's the journey, journey. You know it's the whoa. You know it's the journey, journey. You know it's the journey for me, for me, for me, for me, for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. shakers of the industry. I'm here today with none other than Timothy Richardson. How are you doing today? You look fly. Oh girl, thank you. You look beautiful. I love this dress and uh, I'm blessed. You know, I'm alive. I'm here, you know, and uh, it's just like it's an honor to be here with you and doing this interview. You know, to see your progression and everything you've been, you know, over the, I've been fortunate to know Brittany over the past few years and I'm just so proud of it, just like where you're at. So this is, I love this. Thank you, thank you, yeah. Um, I've interviewed you before with Sheen Magazine, mm -hmm. and it's always great when you get to cross platforms, you know, it's nothing like being able to spread the love everywhere. Of course, yeah. Yes, yes, so of course you've got a, a project coming out, mm -hmm. um, B-Boy Blues, yeah. right? Okay, <laughs> talk to, first of all, the titles fly, <laughs> so. <laughs> I, I know we've got a spoiler alert, but um, Jesse Smollett is going to be directing, right? He is going to be, yes, he directed the film. He directed the film. Jesse Smollett directed the film. He did a phenomenal job. Jesse is, yeah. 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 Okay, tell me about B Boy Blues. Um, who is your character and what's the overall gist? <laughs> so, B Boy Blues is based on the best selling book that was written in 1994 by James Earl Hardy. And I play Mitchell. I play Mitchell. I play uh, AKA a little bit. Um, <laughs> I love I love Mitchell's character. I'm actually a journalist, and the story it, like it's a love story. I'm a journalist, and I fall in love with Raheem, who's a bike messenger, and we're in two separate worlds, and we find love through that. And uh, I'm really excited for people to see it. It's a great love story. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So when it comes to um, love stories, black love stories, yeah. uh, what do you think that this film uh, is contributing that a lot of films maybe are missing? I think a lot of times in our black films, we kind of have mm. these structures that we feel the need to stay in. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think is pushing the limits, but also telling our stories properly? You know, I think it's going to be great to shed a light on two black men being in love. I think that's going to be a great, um, that's going to be a great, a great perspective for people to see, you know, because it is our stories, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm a strong believer that, you know, I always grew up knowing that I am not the only person on this earth who I am and how I was made and the way I think and the way I'm structured. And I loved exploring a different realm of, of you know, somebody else's life that even if it doesn't necessarily correlate, you know, with mine, I found so many similarities, you know, with Mitchell. And uh, I think that's going to be the biggest thing is that, you know, we get to see a different perspective on black love and, you know, like what we're usually not used to seeing. And then, you know, defining that in such a strong, passionate, masculine, you know, and loving way. So I think that's, I think it's going to be great. What was it like working with Jesse? I know we've all watched him yeah. mature and Man. grow in the industry, but as I a director, him. you know, you, yeah. you're getting a different experience. Yeah, I love him. He, he is, it is, I mean, fantastic. I, I told, I told Jesse when we were actually making the movie that, um, to me as an actor, it just, it felt like an internship because I just got mm -hmm. to see this elite artist at work and to see how focused he was and day in and day out. That just drove me as an artist to, you know, always come and bring my A-game and dive deeper into the story and really ask myself, you know, who am I going to be when I leave this film? How am I going to change? How is this going to change me for the better? What am I going to learn from my character? So it was always, you know, day in and day out, like learning lessons, you know, taking home the script and like, you know, finding the subtext and the text and really understanding what's going on and not just 
playing the character but being the character and, and you know Jesse was our fearless captain our leader alongside James King James you know oh, you know James L. Hardy and they um and they believed in me and the character I'm just so fortunate I got to play it Now, you're not only an actor, but you're a DP as well. Yeah. So what is that like uh, from your <laughs> from from the director's chair or, you know, like, what do you um, think is your niche and mm -hmm. what kind of film do you like to produce? I love dramas. You know, um, I, you know, I'm a realist. I think I think life is very real, you know, right? So it's um, I like I like getting to the essence of that. I like um I think the medium of film could be, you know, it's cathartic, you know, it's it's therapeutic. Um, I tend to always lean more towards a film, especially when I'm DPing. It's something that um, I can have a shoulder rig and just kind of be in the mix with the actors. And uh, there's a special moment that happens where, you know, like you know, like being an actor, and I'm I'm blessed to have started in front of the camera because now behind it I kind of have an eye of what to look for but there's this moment of authenticity that happens where you just know it's no longer acting mm -hmm. these two have now given in to these words they're saying as if God has given them these words like if they were to live a life and they didn't know they were going to say these words they're coming out so naturally now it's coming from a place that's so meaningful and uh, being a DP allows me you know when I get behind the viewfinder and watch somebody act it it, the world changes, you know, and I just love that. So, what uh, has been the most recent project that you've been DP a part of, and, and what was it about? Brothers. Um, it's actually my thesis film from uh, college. Mm -hmm. I uh, just recently graduated with a master's. With a master's. Come on now. <laughs> Come on, black man. <laughs> Wait, now let's talk about. That. Let's go I back. First of all, yes. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so yes. much. Yes. Let's talk about the thesis. Yes. Um, so I just recently graduated from Georgia State, and uh, oh man, it was such a journey. You know, I didn't. Uh, I heard a saying that you don't actually go to film school to learn you know to learn how to make a film you know you get like you go to film school to get the opportunity to and I think I had to really meditate on that because I ended up meeting like-minded individuals who now are lifelong you know colleagues and filmmakers uh, that I'm going to be co collaborating with and um, it just it changed my whole perspective on storytelling you know that's when I fell in love with you know being a cinematographer and I knew that was just you know the path for me and um that progressed into, and I had, you know, it's crazy. I think film school helped me. Um, it gave me the tools and resources to be bold enough and confident enough to make my thesis film, which is called Brothers. And Brothers is about two young black men. Their names are uh, David and Morris. And despite them being friends for years, their friendship is constantly questioned because of differences in sexuality. You know, and uh, it's it's semi autobiographical, even about my own life. And I just I just think it's it was something that you know what it's a small story told in a really big way, and um, it was just great. We shot it in you know downtown Atlanta, and um, the film has since gone on to get accepted into the Bronze Lens Film Festival. It it uh, premiered there, and it just recently got into the Urban Film Festival in Miami two days ago. So, yes, yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. What do you think um, is a misconception about getting a formal education when yeah. it comes to cinematography and acting that, you know, people have their own paths right. to their destiny. But what do you think is something that people should know when it comes to them actually deciding whether or not they want to pursue that professional? Wow. That's such a great question. Really. <laughs> You're so good at this. Um. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You know, I, I feel like the misconception is that, you know, there's so much YouTube, there's so many, you know, external voices telling somebody that they don't need to. And, and, and I'm a person that, like, whichever path is great for somebody, it's, you know, it's, it's for that person. I know people who are successful in what they do and have not gone, you know, to get their master's or gone to film school, like even undergrad. I think for me, it just, it act, I was able to ask myself a question, how serious are you about this? I think that was the biggest thing. I, you know, I had two years to really ask myself that question. 
um, I feel like everybody's going to learn the same thing. You're going to pick up a camera. You're going to put it down. You're going to be sound guy. You're going to learn all these different positions. But the biggest question is when you leave, you know, and it's all said and done and you graduate, how serious are you about this? You know, and I think establishing those relationships with professors that would ask me the tough questions of, you know, this is a day in and day out job. You can't put it down and pick it back up. If you want to be a filmmaker, you're going to be a filmmaker, you're going to be a storyteller, you know? And uh, I was just, I was just so fortunate to, to meet great professors who just allowed me to dig down deep and, you know, understand like, okay, I do want to do this. I do. This is something that like, I know it's going to be a hard journey. And even in now, I mean, even like what we both do, you know, being entrepreneurs, being, you know, um, it, it, it's, there's so much love behind it, you know, like you can go through so much, you know, heartache and there's times where, you, you know, like you want to put it down or you ask yourself, am I going in the right direction? But, you know, it's caused me, you know, I already have a great relationship with God, you know, but it's caused me to talk to him more and more and day by day because I've had to seek more and more direction doing this, you know, and I feel like that's the whole spiritual journey you go through going from film school personally you know um for me but um and then to go back to the question it, it's uh we just have so i, I mean today we're, we're just like the world is ran by technology and you have these powerful influencers who are telling you that you don't need to spend this money and go to film school because this is me and i make hundred thousand dollars per year and a lot of that is fabricated you know um i feel like for most people you know it's whatever works for you ask yourself deep down you know if any storyteller, you could just pick up a camera and start telling a story when you need film school. But I feel like there's certain, you know, aspects that really, it teaches you discipline. You know, if you look for the right people and the right things in it, and uh, that's definitely what film school did for me. So, yeah, I'd encourage it for anybody who's thinking about film school, you know, I would definitely do it. Going back to the beginning of your passion, uh, yeah. starting at acting, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. um, where did that start for you? What, what did that look like, and, and how quickly did that maturate? Uh, I started off modeling, right? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't enough for me. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> it wasn't enough, you know? Um, I realized then I was obsessed with the still image, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I cared less about how I looked in the picture and more so what the picture made people feel and how it looked overall, exposure and all these different things, like before I even knew it. And then modeling led me to acting and it wasn't like I was just right off the back, like, yeah, this, I've always been great at acting. Um, I've had some great, some great guardian angels, you know, from Felicia Rashad to, you know, Terrell Alvin McCranny, um, Jesse Smollett, all these different people who have just, I mean, they so graciously came into my life and once again, asked me the hard questions. You know, how bad do you really want to do this? Asking me to dig down deep and understand what being a storyteller is like. And each day I'm still digging down deep and try to understand that I'm getting better at it. Um, but that was the catalyst to it. And, uh, and I knew I was like, whatever this evolves into, I'm just gonna trust the process and just stay the course of it as best as I can. Well, that was the best thing you could have ever done. <laughs> Your journey has definitely taken you some places. Yeah, it has. Yeah. So, fast forwarding to now, um, okay. with everything that is going on with, you know, 2020 kind of having to shape and reshape a lot of people and their thoughts about what they wanted to do, was there any part of uh, 2020 that shaped your mentality now about what you want to do or did it solidify anything or was it not affected? Yeah, 2020 was a doozy, wasn't it? For everybody. <laughs> um, I think it it allowed me to sit down and meditate just like a lot of us. It, 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 it shut the world down, right? And we had to sit down for a second and think about a lot. And I think it gave me a... Um, it gave me... It gave me time to strategize build a plan and understand like what am I doing in the next you know five years what am I doing in ten years and um, I think I think I was able to get you know I was able to clear my head you know because before you know in 2019 I, I had just began my first year of film school so everything was really chaotic you know and you know I felt like I was already 
you know, one step behind most film students. I didn't go to undergrad for film, so um, it was just this huge learning curve for me. So I was able to sit down and just study, watch movies, um, keep auditioning, um, dive deeper into the craft. So, um, and I think like a lot of us, right? We just, like, we were able to look within and we were able to figure some things out about ourselves. We were able to address some things about ourselves, the things we don't like, the things we do like. And I mean, I mean, overall, granted, you know, it's it, it was it was just such a tough time. I mean, even for my family personally, and a lot of families out there. Um, but I, I'm a strong believer, and you know, I have a best friend that's a therapist, and you know, we always try to find the, the positive and the negative. So we did a lot of that during the quarantine as well. So where uh, does the future look like it's taking you? Um, with what you're doing right now uh, and your film um, B-Boy Blues it drops in November correct? Or it, is, already... it is It is going to be premiering in November it is it is at the American Black Film Festival yes ma'am it is yeah that's on the website so I can say that <laughs> <laughs> okay perfect All right. I was like wait <laughs> no. okay so uh, beyond the film um, with the trajectory of how everything is going right now where do you see yourself um, in the five year plan that you mentioned you know I would just I pray you know I'm I'm really big nowadays I'm just kind of listening to where God's going to take me you know um, I and this is when I talk about working on ourselves, right? I have a tendency to want to control, you know, that, that aspect. You know, I don't like ambiguity. I like knowing what's going to be going on with me and these different things. But then I, I realize that I have to understand the industry that I'm in. Sometimes I have to just kind of trust the process. And what's for me is what's for me. Um, I, think, un- I think undoubtedly this is like, this is for you. you. I mean, you have the presence, you have the essence, and this, it just, it fits you, you know? And... I think just believing in that when I make decisions and just knowing that if it works out for me, it does, and if it does, it does. And I would hope that I'm still somewhere, you know, making making stories, telling great stories, meaningful stories. Um, I think that is the biggest thing when it comes to acting. Like, you know, coming off of a film like People with Blues, it really just, you know, it just, it really caused me to ask myself, like, now, like, what kind of stories do I want to tell? You know, because there's... There's so many different aspects, you know, of just being black, you know, about black love. I don't feel like we, we see too many dynamic stories about black love and just, you know, our lives, black culture, you know. So it's, uh, I think in five years, I would just for sure definitely still want to be dp as well. I would like to have a camera over my shoulder and still making, you know, films, run traditional films. That's my production company. And, uh enjoying the process of just understanding what it all means to be a storyteller I think I think that's the biggest thing you know not the like whatever fame or note or like notoriety that brings from it awards um, those things come and go you know and trying to block out the noise but just really focusing on the work I'm always saying that so in five years I just I just want to be focused on the work and just doing what I love to do and Hopefully still being interviewed by Brittany. (laughs) (laughs) Look, I received that. I received that. You know, giving you some more material for me to sit down and have a lovely talk with you. And and let's continue doing this for, you know, until the wheels fall off. I would love that. Let's. And and on that note, please let the people know um, where they can find your films, where they can find the dates, and where they can get to know you as well. Great. Uh... I'm I'm Timothy Richardson. Uh, my Instagram handle is Timothy M Richardson. Um, Brothers is going to be premiering at the Urban Film Festival actually this this weekend, well, next weekend, Labor Day weekend. Um, B Boy Blues, look look out for that in the fall, specifically November. You'll be hearing more information on that. And uh, there's a couple other things you know I have that I haven't released yet, but just know Brittany will probably be one of the first people to know. Absolutely. I have a great relationship <laughs> with her, so yes. yeah. 2017 Timothy. Hard work works. It does. I heard Denzel Washington say that, and you've kind of let that ring in your head over the years, and I sit here now and evolved, um, you know, man, and I'm here to let you know. Stay
stay the course because it, it does work and it is working and it will continue to work. And as much as you at times doubt yourself, there's no need to. I promise you that.